Hello and welcome to my 16th video of my Info Beginners tutorial series, Tables. Tables are an efficient hash table that maps keys to values, a container similar to arrays and sequences which holds pair elements. Each pair consists of a key and a value. They are of a dynamic size, and each of these elements has a key and a value. When you access an array's element by using the array's name and inside square brackets the index of the element you want to access, with a table you would instead use the key and it would retrieve return the value of that particular key. This can be very useful for creating lookup tables. Let me show you the simplest table example. Before we do that, we must first always import tables module, because tables are not part of the system module of NIM STDLab standard library. So far, we have been accessing the system module of NIM standard library without even knowing it. That is because it is imported automatically. Tables are not part of the core system module NIM, so let us import them. Import tables. Now let's make a new variable for IO table. This will be our table variable. Assign. We use curly brackets to construct tables. Then we give it a key. Let's call it output and map to it a value of std out, as in the variable we use to output to the terminal. And then another key of input and its value of stdn and then we have to call to table procedure to make this table we must use this procedure to make a table because there are several different types of tables so the compiler cannot know what kind of table we want so we need to name it correctly so to table there are also order tables etc now let's use this table to output and input data like we would by just using the std in and std out variables. So let's write to the terminal by calling the name of the table, io table, then in square brackets, output key, then call the write procedure on it, just like we would with std out. So write and then some text. Well, let's run this. Here we go. It does exactly the same as if we would just call the std out variable and then write procedure on it. Now let's do the same with stdn for input. Let's copy this line. Bio table. Input read line. Remove this text. Now we need to save this to a variable. So let data is io table and then echo that data once we're done with it. Let's run this. Hello. And here we go. Works the same. Now this example isn't that useful since it makes the actual outputting and inputting longer to write. So let's make a more concrete example by making an order table. Normal tables are unordered. Therefore, when you add new elements to it, they will not be in that order for efficiency reasons. So if you want to make an order table, you must call the to order table procedure when constructing a table instead. Let's make a table that will hold Roman numerals as keys and their values as our number system. System. Let's copy and paste the previous table, name it Roman ordered and change the procedure call on it from table to, to order table like this. Let's comment this out so it won't always stop the program to get input. Let's call this variable Roman as in Roman digits assign curly brackets and then the first one is m which is a thousand then d which is 500 then c which is a hundred l which is 50 x which is 10 v which is 5 and i which is one then call the procedure to ordered table now let's display the table by using a for loop we also have to use an iterator to find made inside the tables module because you can't just use the name of the table you have made in the for loop to iterate over it you need to use the pairs iterator like a procedure call on the name of the table in the for loop because every element inside a table is a pair of key and value so for R as in Roman in Roman dot pairs iterator 
then we echo r. Now let's run this. Here we go. All of the Roman numerals in order. So m as 1000, d as 500, c as 100, and so on. Now if we were to do this as a normal table, all of these would be unordered. So let's copy this line. Let's call this one, the second one ordered. And the first one, the normal one, to table. Now let's call two loops. Copy this one. And this one will be for unordered and this one for ordered. Now let's run this. Okay, so this one is unordered, the first one. So the first loop goes first, then C is 100, then it's D 500, V is 5, and so on. So this one is unordered, and this one is ordered, the bottom one. Besides the normal unordered and ordered tables, there is also a count table variant. This variant is also an unordered table like the first IO table, but it also counts every occurrence of a pair, which means that if you were to have two or more pairs that are identical, it will display a number of occurrences when displaying it. Let's comment out these for loops so we won't get a spam of text in our terminal. Now let's copy this line, this table, and call it Roman count. Then let's call the two count table procedure on it to make it a count table. Now well, let's copy this for loop, paste it down here, and rename this to count pairs, and let's output this. Here we go. It also displays a an additional parameter of number one for each of them because there is only only one occurrence of each of these letters inside this table. Let's duplicate some of these pairs like M, duplicate it, and let's say C, duplicate it two more times. Now let's run this. Here we go. All of them are one except M is two, which means two occurrences, and C, three. You can change the values of keys similarly to arrays. You use the name of our table, square brackets, and into the square brackets insert the key to access that key's value just like we did before, then assign it a new value like this. Roman, square brackets, let's give it i key and change the value of i to 2. Now let's do the same for the order table, Roman ordered. Now let's comment this for loop out and uncomment these two and run it. Okay, i of the second one, the ordered one, is 2. And same goes for the unordered one, the first one. Now, if we were to do this for the count table, this won't work. Let's copy and paste this. Count. Now this will error. Here we go. Visual Studio Code is telling us that this won't work. So let's comment this out. Now let's try to add new pairs, just like with sequences. You can add new pair elements to tables with the add procedure, like this. Let's first put an echo here to separate this. Now let's roman.add. Now instead of using the curly brackets like we did before, we just give them the pairs as arguments. So we give it q as the first argument and its value, let's say 3, as the second. Now let's do the same for the order table. Roman ordered. Now let's run this. Here we go. Q as free. This is the order table because it's second, second loop. The reason it's at the bottom and not before i is because this table is not ordered by value but ordered by insertion. So all of these have been inserted in order. So this one is first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and this one will be eight. So it goes here to the last position, not before i. While for the unordered one, it goes somewhere. Doesn't matter where, it just goes somewhere. There are many different procedures made specifically for working with tables. One of the most useful ones is called has key, which finds a key you provide in that table and returns true or false if it found it. Let's try this. Okay, let's make a new if statement. If Roman call has key procedure on it and give it q, the newest pair we added to it, and echo count q. Now let's run this. 
Here we go, found queue. Now this also works for order tables. Let's copy and paste this. Roman ordered, found ordered queue. Now let's run this, works for both. Now this won't work for count tables. So if we copy and paste this to try it, if Roman count, here we go, Visual Studio Code has already detected that this won't work. Neither will assigning new values to keys nor adding new pairs. There is also a reference variant of all three kinds of tables we have used so far. Reference tables belong to object-oriented programming and will be the subject of a future video. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you liked it. If you had any problems with any part of the video, let me know in the comment section. The code for this video is in the link in the description. Have fun.